Canon added pixel shift to the Canon EOS R5 last week in firmware 1.8.1. But a lot of people weren't too happy with the firmware update. Either it was lacking a whole bunch of information, or what on earth was Canon doing putting pixel shift at 400 megapixels? Who needs it? It's ridiculous. These are unwanted file sizes, were some of the comments. I was finally able to play around with pixel shift during my lunch break, and, well, my findings are quite surprising. The only question I have for you is, who has a better pixel shift implementation? Is it the Canon R5 or Sony with its A7R5? Details coming up, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe, share, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that great stuff. It's greatly appreciated, means an awful lot to me, but most importantly, it really helps this channel grow. I used to feel that pixel shift was simply a gimmick. Early implementations, well, they couldn't handle vibrations from the ground, the tripod, or even a slight breeze, the movement of grass or leaves, essentially limiting its scope and usefulness. Then Sony released the A7R5 last year. It was capable of capturing 240 megapixel images with stunning detail, without unwanted artifacts created by moving subjects. Pixel shift was no longer a gimmick. When Canon released firmware 1.8.1 last week for the R5, completely skipping 1.8.0, we got a new capability, a capability that we hadn't seen before on Canon DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, and that's pixel shift Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to take any images until the weekend when I took these. I used a very good tripod, but I should have snapped them using the 2 or 10 second timer. Why didn't I? Well, because I didn't have a lot of time, and what I wanted to test, what I wanted to see right away, I wanted to see if the R5 could capture pixel shift images with slow moving subjects in the frame. And as you can see here, it failed. The R5's implementation of pixel shift, called IBIS High Resolution, was unable to account for moving subjects, leaving unwanted artifacts like it did here. Sony deserves a lot of credit for what they've done. If our trees had leaves on them, or our grass wasn't a dead mess, I'd snap some pictures of moving grass and leaves, but I suspect the R5 would have trouble with those as well. And I won't be able to test these types of moving subjects until late May. For my second test, I wanted to see how well the R5 would do at capturing detail, only this time, on objects at rest. The Sony A7R5 can capture pixel shift images up to a resolution of 240 megapixels. The Canon R5, up to 400 megapixels. My first attempt at shooting an object at rest is this brick wall. I don't know how well brick walls are made in your country, but here uh, they tend to not move around unless, of course, we've got really high gale force winds. It's a 33.1 megapixel JPEG at a 45 megapixel resolution. And this, as well as all the other images you're seeing, I didn't apply any color correction or effects. And there's decent detail as one would expect from a 45 megapixel camera. But with IBIS high resolution enabled, we get a much larger file, 238.6 megabytes. But as you can start to see, the detail is much better, giving landscape, food, and product photographers an edge. And for my next image, I'm shooting a fence, and this largely monochromatic image has a file size of 29.9 megabytes, and it's also a JPEG. At no point in this video did I use any RAW files. IBIS High Resolution enables us once again to get more detail, especially when viewed side by side. And the file size this time around is 248.6 megabytes. This third image was taken inside. I wanted to see how well the camera would do shooting IBIS high resolution if shooting in low light. Once again, IBIS high resolution delivered much more detail. It's easy to see the level of detail, the extra detail when looking at these small stones. Without IBIS high resolution, the small crack shows almost no detail. But if you look closely at this rather large 252.7 megabyte file, IBIS high resolution has another advantage the ability to reduce noise in low light environments. You'll recall we didn't have this problem when shooting outside. And while there's definitely an artificial pattern that we can see if we pixel peep and push further, the detail and lack of noise is much better than if we were shooting without IBIS high resolution. Is Canon's implementation of pixel shift reliable? Is it solid? Is it worthwhile? And the simple answer is yes. And while it doesn't produce nearly as good results as the Sony with 240 megapixel images, you see, the Sony has the ability to be able to shoot images with subjects moving or objects moving without creating any artifacts. And the Canon R5 and firmware 1.8.1 with their implementation of pixel shift, well, they just can't match that. So what do you need to shoot in pixel shift or as Canon calls it, IBIS high resolution? 
Well, the first thing you need is firmware 1.8.1 on the Canon EOS R5. You also need a sturdy tripod, a tripod that isn't going to move around. Even a slight breeze can get the cheapest tripod to move around a little bit. And that makes it a little bit more challenging with the Canon R5, even though it's got IBIS, to be able to produce, well, blur-free pixel shift images. You also need a decently fast or modern computer because on average, the file sizes are between 230 megabytes up to almost 300 megabytes, and they're absolutely massive. For me, I was editing with a Mac computer. I think it's called the Mac Studio Ultra. And it, well, it had no problem editing the images, although it would still take around two to three seconds to completely refresh the image after opening it up or applying any sort of artif not artifact or some sort of um, preset or filter to it. And lastly, make sure you use a timer or a remote control when shooting. Uh, if you're gonna use the timer, set it to two seconds or 10 seconds. And I highly recommend setting it to 10 seconds, then stepping back a few feet. If you set it to two seconds and you're moving around, believe it or not, by just walking on the ground, you can actually induce vibrations that can create a blurry image. So I think that pixel shift is usable. If you're gonna be doing product or food photography, or if you're gonna be doing landscape photography, I think it's gonna do really, really well. But the only thing I wasn't able to test because you know it's spring here, we don't even have any grass, there's no leaves on the trees, is if you're gonna be shooting, let's say landscape, you've got trees in the background and, you, and you've even got a slight movement, I'm not 100% sure that it's gonna look right and I'll have to test that at the end of May. The same thing with grass. But if you don't have any moving objects in the scene, such as a brick wall, a fence, or food, or products, then yeah, you're definitely gonna get a whole lot more detail and I, I think that's a good thing. After all, we didn't have to pay for this firmware update. And according to Canon Rumors, we are getting some more firmware updates this year, up to two, I think, and one of them being a 2.0. And I wouldn't be surprised if Canon provides updates in firmware or future cameras that provide better, well, pixel shift capabilities, such as being able to take images even with moving subjects or objects and to be able to produce images that are, well, artifact free. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you think this is a worthwhile technology? Worthwhile technology, let's enunciate my words properly. Let me know in the comment section down below or if you still think that it's an absolutely useless, useless feature that's more or less a gimmick. And if you shoot food and product photography and you have the Canon EOS R5, let me know what you think in terms of the extra detail, what you've been able to shoot with this. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. But if you want to stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors, then go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, well, you'll get notified by YouTube, so that way you can stay up to date on all the latest news and information. Just make sure you check your spam and junk mail folder because a lot of times those notifications end up in there. And if you want to stay up to date on all the minor news and rumors, all that information that isn't big enough to have its own separate video, well, then follow me on Twitter at this address here. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.